Hello, Mathies. Welcome back to part two of section 3.3, completing the square when a is not equal to one. Before we do that, let's just review how to complete the square when a does equal one. So again, to complete a square, we're looking to make a perfect square trinomial. Now this one here looks like it might be a perfect square trinomial because 16 is a perfect square and so is x. But if you look at this here, 16 is comprised of 4 times 4, so I would put down 16 here. I would put x squared here, and then if I take 10x and divide it into two pieces like this, you can see it doesn't work out to be a perfect square trinomial, okay? Because that doesn't factor, there's no greatest common factor between 5x and 16. So it is not a perfect square trinomial. So what I'm going to do is focus just on this part here, the x squared plus 10x. So x squared goes here, 10x is divided into two equal pieces, and then we're going to find the number that would make this into a perfect square trinomial. So greatest common factor here is x, greatest common factor here is x, x times x is x squared, x times 5 gives me 5x. Since the leading coefficient is positive, I will take a positive out. Same thing here, x times 5 will give me 5x, and since the leading coefficient is positive, I take that positive out here. So looking at this, what will complete the square is 5 times 5, which is 25. So if the quadratic looked like this, x squared plus 10x plus 25, that would be a perfect square trinomial. But that's not what I started with. I can't just add a 25. So since I add a 25, I must also subtract a 25 because right now 25 take away 25 is just 0. And you can add 0 to anything without changing it. Don't forget it was originally plus 16. So while it looks different, it still has the same value that it had before. So now let's highlight our perfect square. Here's my perfect square trinomial, and I can go ahead and factor that. So I know that it factors as, now actually use these, that's why we put it in there. It factors as x plus 5 squared, and then I just combine my like terms on the outside. So negative 25 plus 16 negative 9. So I've now completed the square and while I didn't know what the vertex was originally, in this form I know that my vertex is horizontal lies, negative 5, vertical is straight up, negative 9. Okay, so we're going to look at what happens when the number in front of x squared is not equal to 1. So to complete the square when a is not 1, the first thing that we're going to do is factor a, but we're just going to factor it from my x terms because my x terms are what I focus on to make it a perfect square trinomial. So once I factored it out, inside the brackets we're going to find the value of c that makes it a perfect square just like I did before. And so I'm going to add and subtract c inside the brackets. But inside the brackets, I would then have four terms, and I only want three. So this step here, what I'm going to do is add a times negative c outside the brackets, and then factor the expression to complete the square, group your like terms on the outside. So these are all the steps. It probably will make a lot more sense when we go through an example. So let's try this one. I want to complete the square. So first thing is I need to factor the three out. So whatever number is in front of x squared, I factor it just from the x terms. So this will be 3 times x squared plus 30 divided by 3, 10x plus 41. So I'm going to complete the square for what's inside the brackets here. So I'm going to take x squared, divide 10x into two equal pieces. We've done one just like this one actually. So I know it factors like this, positive leading coefficient comes out, positive leading coefficient comes out, and then I know that 5 times 5, 25 completes the square. So what I'm going to do is 3 on the outside. Inside the brackets, I'm going to add the 25, which makes it a perfect square trinomial, but also subtract 25 because I can't change the question, plus 41. So just to reiterate, if I take 25 and I subtract 25, what I've really done is added 0. Now, 
I only want three terms on the inside because that's what's going to be a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial does not have four terms. It only has three. So what I want to do is I want to write it like this. Three times x squared plus 10x plus 25. I want my bracket to end there. So this negative 25 has to come out. But I can't just bring it out because it's not a negative 25. It's a 3 times negative 25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3 times negative 25 out. So 3 times negative 25 is negative 75. That is what comes out, okay? And then I know that that was plus 41. So again, I'm going to highlight my perfect square trinomial, which is right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and factor that. So let me make that bigger so we can see the whole screen. So this we did for a reason. This is how I factor what's on the inside, x plus 5 times x plus 5. So keep the 3 on the outside, and it will be x plus 5 all squared. And then it's just a matter of combining my like terms on the outside. So once I factored my trinomial, I just have to do negative 75 plus 49, or sorry, 41, which is negative 34. So now that I've completed the square, I can state my vertex. I couldn't see it originally, but I know that my vertex now has coordinates of horizontal lies, negative 5, and vertical is straight up, negative 34. So especially because I now have an A value, I think it's always a good idea to check it on the calculator just to see if we did it correctly. So I want to know if I completed the square correctly. So what I'm going to do is in Y1 I put the original, 3x squared plus 30x plus 41. In Y2 I put what I completed my square, 3 times x plus 5 squared minus 30. 1. Remember the check always happens in the table. So since y1 equals y2, that means they're the same function, which means I completed the square correctly. So I'd like to try another example with a negative a value. So let's try that. Okay. So same idea here. Whatever is in front of x squared, I factor just from my x terms. Now, when there's a negative, I want you to pay special attention to the signs. So negative 18 divided by negative 3 is actually positive 6x and my brackets minus 24. So let's focus on what's on the inside here. We want to make this a perfect square. So I take x squared and I divide 6x into two equal pieces. So along here, a GCF of x, along here, a GCF of x. And I know the only way I can get 3x is if I do 3 times x. Leading coefficient is positive, so a positive comes out. The only way I can get 3x down here is x times 3. And again, leading coefficient is positive, which comes out like that. So on the inside here, what's going to complete the square is positive 3 times positive 3 which is positive 9. So I know 9 is going to complete my square, so I'm going to add 9 on the inside and also subtract 9. So I haven't changed the value of the question because 9 take away 9 is actually 0. So what I want to do now is come down here. Let me just write out what I have. x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9 all minus 24. So again, I'm going to highlight my perfect square, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and factor. Okay, so completing the square here, the perfect square trinomial here is x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. Now, I want the negative 9 outside the brackets, but I can't put just a negative 9 outside the brackets because there is a number in front. So I just want you to do negative 3 times negative 9 and bring that out. So negative 3 times negative 9 is positive 27, and then combine that with the negative 24. So I have y equals negative 3 x plus 3 squared, and then combine your like terms. 27 take away 24 is 3. So now that I completed the square, I can state what my vertex is, and I couldn't see that originally, but by completing the square, I can now. So horizontal lies, negative 3, 
vertical is straight up positive 3. So that's my vertex and that's my completed square form. So I just want to do one more example where we're going to do an error analysis. So in this question here, a student was asked to complete the square and they show their work. Now they show their work without our graphic organizer, but that's okay. We're going to do it with the graphic organizer just so we can see what they've done. So in step number one, they factored out the number in front, which is negative three. Now because it's a negative, I'm always on high alert just to make sure that they did that correctly. So I take the negative three outside. So I'm left with x squared. Negative 6x divided by negative 3 is positive 2x, and the minus 5 goes out. Okay, so I thought they'd make a mistake there, but it looks good. So now what they're doing is completing the square. So here I have x squared, and then 2x is 1x and 1x in two equal pieces. So factoring out by GCF looks like this. And if you don't need this graphic organizer, you don't have to use it. I just know a lot of students are visual, and they like to see this process. So it's really up to you. Okay, so looking at what completes the square, I know that 1 times 1 is 1, so 1 will complete the square. So it looks like they added 1 and also subtracted 1 correctly, minus 5. So I would say this step is correct. Then what they did is they focused on the perfect square trinomial. So let me just highlight that. So here's my perfect square trinomial, which I know factors as x plus 1 times x plus 1. So they got that part right. Then let's see what they brought out on the outside. So remember on the outside what we have to do is negative 3 times negative 1 bring that out. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, but I can see they just brought out a positive 1. So that number right there should be a positive 3. So this step is incorrect. So the student made the error in step number three. So hopefully those examples help you with completing the square. Completing the square is a very old process. It's actually roughly 2.5 million years old. It was actually first discovered in the Paleolithic period, as illustrated here. Caveman time. Look what this guy did. He said, hey, I just completed this. I think the math guys will love it. So see, 2.5 million years ago, they were completing the square. So you guys can go on and do your practice questions, which are in my notes, and then move on to your textbook questions after that. I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.